This is probably one of Adventure Archive's biggest planning blunders yet. <laughs> Late spring, things are waking up, flowers are blooming, and everything is green again. It's a perfect time to go on an adventure. This time, our destination was Shenandoah National Park. To go backpacking, just get a free backcountry permit at any of the 10 stations, or have it mailed to you ahead of time. For this trip, we are planning on hiking onto the Hazel Mountain Trail, and looping back around on Sam's Ridge Trail and the White Rocks Trail. You can practice dispersed camping here, spending a night on undisturbed ground. Those prefer that you look for a previously used campsite. It had been eight years since we were last here, and we were excited to see more of the park. We passed by some witch hazel and some parasitic bear corn, and further down the trail was more of that flora that I'm fond of. This tree is called striped maple, and it gets its name from this beautiful, like really emerald green bark with these stripes on it. I remember seeing these in Dolly Sods on a separate trip that I took. And this plant with these beautiful radial leaves is called Indian Cucumber. And if you were to dig that up and eat the root, it'd be really small, but it'd be this nice refreshing crunch. It's good stuff. There were also some unfurling fern fronds. I was hoping they were the edible ostrich fern, but they lack the characteristic groove in their stem. We continued down the trail, and we could feel the forest breathing all around us. Further along, we started to catch glimpses of distant mountains through the breaks in the canopy. Small rivulets ran through the trail. They cascaded down the mossy rocks, creating a magical feeling often captured in fairy tales. Before long, dusk was upon us. Oh. It is getting dark. I think we're all gonna get our headlamps out. This is just like when we came to Shenandoah last time. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely did night hiking the first time. Yeah. This entire trail has been on a hill, so I don't, I don't see any potential campsite yet. <laughs> Did you look at the map and see approximately how far it'd be? No, there's nothing that'll tell you, like it doesn't tell you where the campsites are on the map at all. And you said the campsites here are... Technically you can camp wherever, but they prefer you to camp at ones that have already been used. Got it. Well, I remember the same feeling of desolation last time. <laughs> I, I think we've had that feeling every time. <laughs> Darkness enshrouded the forest, and we still hadn't seen a campsite. Although night hiking is commonplace for us, we were hoping to settle down soon. 
we feel like this has to be coming up on a campsite soon. Just kind of has that more open feel, you know? Yeah, everything's leveled out and there's not a slope on both of our sides now. This is very, <laughs> very reminiscent of 2008. <laughs> we were really careful about the rocks and we kept warning each other if there was like rocks and stuff. The rocks were really slippery. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of water flowing over the rocks. I remember at one point you fell. Did I? Yeah. It's not too surprising, I guess. <laughs> There's two blazes here. I'm pretty sure that means we're coming up on the junction where it splits into two trails. We were now on lower ground and there were streams everywhere. But it seems like no matter where we looked, any flat ground was covered in rocks and shrubs. Robbie insists that there is a campsite across this little stream. And uh, I'm not so sure, but I feel like there would be an actual path. I mean, maybe this is, but it also just doesn't look like anyone's been through here in years. It looks really rocky. Ooh. Well, maybe what we should look for is not just like open spaces, but trails coming off of the main path. Because if I remember, they were pretty secluded, so that might mean there's something. Okay, this has got to be campsite territory. Like, look how flat this is. Of course, we've been saying that for the past 20 minutes and <laughs> to no avail. Maybe we can find a bear den to cozy up in. <laughs> we came across a flat yeah, open area, but it seemed a bit rocky. Uh, Workable, well, but far rocky, from though. ideal. I say we check a little bit and then come back to here. We we'll have to go further if we're gonna eat anyway, so we might as well check. That's true, yeah. Well, we, found we decided to continue on and look for a better campsite, but that may have been a mistake. We hadn't seen anything. And now it's starting to rain. I really want to hurry up and get our shelters set up, but this is not looking super promising. Okay, we just found this little offshoot and I think it looks like it's promising. This might be good. This is workable. This plant down here is an edible wild plant called wood betony. Learned that when I was in the Smokies. This we again found a workable campsite close by the stream. In fact, Let's a little bit too water, close. It was set to rain tonight and we didn't want to get flooded out. Well, this could be our downfall, but we're again gonna just look ahead a little more for another campsite because that's really close to the water. And if it's supposed to rain, I would rather not get super wet <laughs> from, the, from the ground up. <laughs> I was literally just asking if we had actually passed this junction yet and we see a signpost or something Buck Hollow Trail, Skyline. Oh, this is the first junction. I think we're going to want to go right. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but that's what I was thinking. We decided to rest at this junction. I scouted a bit ahead and found a good place to camp. There's some decent stuff up there. It's like kind of squishy, leafy ground. Not as brushy, not super flat, but definitely workable. Now, it was time to eat. You can't have campfires in this park, but camping stoves, including wood stoves like ours, are permitted. Andrew found a pretty good place over there, and I brought this brown rice that I'm gonna cook up. I believe the ratio I was taught was two cups of water for every one cup of rice. We brought tinder joints just in case for this fire stove, but there's plenty of tulip poplar in this area. So I'm gonna process this bark down. Thank you, Mike Trong, for this lovely gift. It's the first time I'm gonna use it.
All of the wood on the ground was damp, and it was hard to keep a good flame going, even after lighting the tinder. Okay, let's do the tinder joint. <laughs> Well, that was significantly more easy. <laughs> See, my excuse is that when you're working with such a small area, you can't collect tons and tons of bark and sticks to work with. You just have this tiny bit to work with, and that's not very conducive to getting a fire going. Which is why I brought the tinder joints. Yeah. But damn it, I'm principled. <laughs> We kept the stove going enough to cook the rice a decent amount. Now that's good eating! Next, Andrew had some dried wild plants to add to the concoction. I've got wild leeks and uh, cleavers, or gallium aparine. Oh, you wanna put that much in there? We just try not to destroy the delicate flavors we've cultivated. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried these? Like something that I... And to top it off, we added some of Robbie's crunchy beef jerky. <laughs> now, for the taste test. Mm. It's not too bad. <laughs> uh, hits the spot. Uh -huh. All right, big thanks to Meredith McLaughlin. Is that her name? <laughs> that is her name. <laughs> Big thanks to Meredith McLaughlin for giving us these amazing dried fruits. There's apples, kiwi, banana, strawberry. It's like candy. When you take out all the water, mm -hmm. it's nothing but the sugar. You're like reducing it. <laughs> yeah. Nice job. Mm -hmm. Now it was time to hang the food, and I had found the perfect tree. I wonder if it'll be one of my favorite trees. This is going to be a bit messy, I think. That's good, right? You think? You're the not person on that. I think it'll work. Oh. That was definitely high enough. Honestly, that was pretty good for the first time. Oh, almost. Oh. Yeah! Woo! Oh, my oh yes! <laughs> wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> Now, if we were to just hang it like this, it would be right next to the tree, but we're gonna do something that'll let it extend out a little bit. So I'm gonna tie a loop. All you do is fold the rope over and tie a square knot. Okay, now we wanna find a stick that's sturdy. I don't know if this'll do. So I gotta use a uh, clove hitch to I'm just gonna make it the bag come way no, down. No, don't worry. I, I got okay, this. I'm holding it. Okay, I need I need some of this. Did I tie that correctly? <laughs> now we pull it again. Okay, okay. Now we gotta tie it down somewhere. Now does anyone have a tent stake? Probably should have asked for that sooner. <laughs> I think slowly. Woo! With our fruit securely hung, we went to check the campsite. It was a bit lumpy, but the ground was nice and soft with a layer of leaf litter. It was time to get some much needed rest.
Rain is a reality that we must face. Rain jacket. All right, let's go see how Brian and Andrew are doing. I kind of keep wondering, like, is this just gonna go on all day? Because <laughs> I was sleeping and my shoulder was right up against this this tent right here. I swear I heard like the leaves rum like crackling, like something like moved our tent so my shoulder kind of went like that, and that woke me up. And I was like, I remember you grabbed yeah. the bear. So I got up, I pulled the bear spray. I just went like this. <laughs> I was like sitting there holding it on my chest. We reminisced a bit about our last trip and how soaked we got from the rain. So we were getting wet like the whole night, but this time my tent was like really well set up beforehand. And I was just like, ah, rain all you want. I am invincible. <laughs> we took down our food bags. Everything was too soaked for the stove. So I mixed my coffee grounds with some cold water. I think you do need to use hot water to brew it. And you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of a hotel. Like every morning, wake up in a hotel and it smells just like this. Mmm. Gritty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to Meredith for giving us these snacks, like these olives, packed loose without the juice. <laughs> I love olives. Mm, very salty. Oh! Oh, oh, mama! Ah. I'm not sure I've had an olive before. It was a fresh experience. came to an opening with a power line, and this wouldn't be the last man-made structure we saw today. Well, apparently, we've hit a road. Interesting. What? I hope we're going the right way. <laughs> I haven't been using my compass at all. <laughs> I hope we're not lost. That would suck. Uh, so right from the start, we took the wrong path. We were supposed to be on Hazel Mountain Trail. <laughs> I pointed out that there was two different separate directions, and I asked Andrew. Uh, <laughs> well, it was, was gated off, so I was like, why would we go that way? <laughs> <laughs> was there a sign? I didn't even notice the sign. But I mean, this is still a loop. Yeah, so we can go back on Buck Ridge Trail and then come back. Oh, yeah. All so right. I change of plans, but. It'll work out. At least we found out where we were before yeah. it got really bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. About five feet into the trail, we had taken a wrong turn. We had hiked up onto Buck Hollow Trail, camping by this junction. Today, we would finish the loop, camping one more night along the way. This is probably one of Adventure Archive's biggest planning blunders yet. <laughs> Everything always works out. Although we'd made a mistake, we weren't too worried. When traveling, it's often the unexpected snags in your plans that make your journey interesting. There was a great deal of uphill that carried us closer to the clouds.
At the top, we rested and had some food. So I got another snack here, courtesy of Meredith McLaughlin. <laughs> Hi, it's McLaughlin. Meredith McLaughlin. Well, I knew. You got it. Isn't there someone named McLaughlin? There's like a singer, right? Yeah. Um, oh, what, in whatever. the eyes of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> got another little snack provided by Meredith McLaughlin. Mitten Munch Trail Bar Blueberry Cobbler. I love blueberry flavored stuff. Dense, chewy. It's actually pretty good. Let me get a bite of that. Yeah, it's very blueberry. I think it's a, it's a good trip so far. Mm -hmm. From the view of the distant misty hills to the delicate mountain laurel flowers along the trail, Everything here had an ethereal beauty. The continual uphill spurred us to talk about the difference between climbing a mountain and conquering it. I really don't like where it's like you're trying to conquer something and then you feel a sense of accomplishment. I like the end goal being the process itself. There's two ways of relating to nature. One is like this sort of I must conquer things attitude. And the other is just being in nature, being nature in harmony. We went on, and the peaceful green canopy and delicate lady slipper flowers seemed much more at home along these steep inclines. It's very interesting how a mountain can be only uphill. These are little galls caused by an insect on this plant. Uh, but I think you, you can actually eat these. I think they're called pinkster apples. I'm not gonna give it a try though. <laughs> but uh, technically they're edible if you had to eat something. We also saw some young black locust, which produces edible flowers earlier in the season. If this next portion is not the top, I think we're just gonna have to camp right here. <laughs> Along the trail, there was a small path veering off. We decided to check and see if there was a campsite there. Yo, bat! Yo, bat! There's 100% not a campsite here. <laughs> Feels like we're on the edge of the world. A little further down, I had spotted what looked like a small clearing off the trail. Go in there. Yeah, let's check it out. This is our campsite. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> It was a cozy little area covered in soft pine needles. Perfect, as far as we were concerned. This is good. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a far cry from setting up camp last time. <laughs> it's 
special little spots like this that you miss when you only check out the touristy spots at a park. It's fun to go to a place and see all the things you've only ever seen in photographs, but it's also worth it to explore a little further and find the hidden places that often get overlooked. Whether you're wandering through a back alley in a city or discovering a small clearing in the wilderness, you'll always be rewarded for trying to experience new places in a more authentic manner. Not only will you see cool things, but you'll also meet interesting people or have incredible experiences. It's fun to stay at a motel and drive up to overlooks and see famous sites, but only wandering through the wilderness can fill you with a different sort of indescribable joy. <laughs> Out of nowhere, this miracle hand comes. <laughs> Even when the scenery doesn't seem as impressive as what you might see at a famous overlook or landmark, the feeling of sheer freedom and adventure is something you can only find by hiking through the back. A haze rolled over the mountains after setting up camp. Now, it was time to eat. Oh, True Detective has a good intro. Mm -hmm. I think it was done by the same people who did Keen Peel's intro. Oh. Take my love. Take my love. <laughs> Take me where I cannot stay. I don't care. And I'm still free. You can't take the sky from me. Take me up to the black. <clears throat> Tell them I ain't coming back. Burn the land and boil the sea. You can take the sky from me. <laughs> I was like pooping, focusing on the ground. <laughs> I looked up and it was all foggy. <laughs> You're a very graceful woman, Inara. <laughs> Got a heat. Sorry. Okay, hopefully these. Hoping some of these will burn. <clears throat> yep. There nope. we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got enough wood, Andrew. So uh, for now, wood we'll, that makes we'll it good. get some more. But... I was thinking about how the first time we came to Shenandoah. It was uh, like not the most impressive scenery. Like we were in a valley and it was just forested and like there weren't any huge views or anything like this. But I still remember being blown away because there was one moment where we were like standing in the middle of a stream and it was our first backpacking trip and I was just, I looked down the stream and I was like, I could walk anywhere I wanted to right now. Mm. And no one would tell me not to like step on their yard or their grass or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It was weird how free that area felt. Yeah. Like even though there was a trail, it was almost like we were going off trail like we did in Morgan Monroe. Mm -hmm. Felt think, very open. Yeah, maybe part of it was just it was like a lot of flat land and you could roam around more. I think we spent two nights. That sounds about right. But we stayed at the same campsite. Yeah, yeah. I just remember it was, I felt like my whole life, I felt like a year went by <laughs> <laughs> just at that campsite. <laughs> well, also remember we had that like breakfast nook? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and we brought, brought sausages. a giant like gas stove. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheese filled sausages. I oh, think. they were, yeah. Remember we didn't have any utensils, so we were carving spoons <laughs> out of our used water <laughs> bottle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were like drinking soup out of the can. I forgot stuff. about that one. Wow. Yeah. Have you guys heard of the bystander effect? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time we go anywhere, we just assume the other person has done the due diligence. <laughs> Or pack the, the bowls, whatever. Been wrong every time. <laughs> it's funny though because I think like that was 
that experience told me that it doesn't matter like traveling in the wilderness is just like traveling anywhere else where that you want to experience the things that locals so to speak would experience get to know one part of the park really well i think look well, weird because this place is so different yeah from where we went last time mm -hmm. you know we probably didn't go very far in so we were probably only at like the beginning of that trail. Mm -hmm. We went down a lot. But yeah, we, we went down in the valley and we never far. came back up, so. Even with this trip, it's like, things did not go at all according to plan. <laughs> but sometimes that's like the funnest part about traveling somewhere. But they went exactly according to the plan. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we didn't go where we thought we were gonna go, but we did exactly what we thought we were gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, all of the natural tinder and kindling was damp today. You might not be able to tell, but we're in a cloud right now. In fact, you can see my breath. And it's not very cold. But yeah, it's kind of hard to start a fire when it's this damp up. So I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a race to get a good blaze going in the wood stove. Many of the embers fall through the grate at the bottom, making it harder to keep consistent heat to ignite the kindling. Like any of it's catching fire. No. Well, there's a ton of oxygen on it, looks very impressive, but. <laughs> yeah, I think it's burning now. There we go. We went back and forth collecting wood and tending to the stove. collecting more wood at all? I would. Or I can. Huh? Okay, just keep an eye on this and feed it wood then. Like, make sure the flames don't die. Basically. Every time we got a fire going, it seemed to want to fizzle out again. But we eventually got it going enough to cook some noodles. Put in that I have this Japanese seaweed and vegetable mix, as well as some dried wood ear fungus, which you could actually find in this area. Did you dry that yourself? No, oh. <laughs> I bought it at the Asian market. <laughs> oh yeah, give that a good twirl. That's the tofu jerky? Mm-hmm. <laughs> tofu jerky, surprisingly good. That's disgusting. You think it's gross? Well, yes. Too sweet? That's just like candied tofu. You like that? Yeah, I love it. Oh. Hmm? Well, no, I'm good. Well, I guess we'll have lukewarm ramen. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can't cook my rice then. I actually wonder if it'd be easier to start an actual campfire. You have more of a space to work with. Oh, for sure, man. You and the get, embers would build up. You can get it going to where you don't have to yeah. constantly tend it. Mm -hmm. You get to that point where the fire's sustainable. Yeah. Like this wood stove, if it ever goes out and you got a fire, you just grab a branch, boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taste that's it. Technically, like everything in here is already cooked. <laughs> oh yeah. That's eatable right now. With the evening's tasks done, it was time to relax and to thank our wonderful supporters on Patreon. First of all, John Truitt, also known as Jig and John T, <laughs> and Sunjan Huang. John didn't have a specific shout out that he wanted to give, but Sunjan wanted a shout out to Everett and August. And those are our biggest donors, so thank you so much. Greg Cribb, shout out to you. Thank you so much for your support. It's nice to know your last name now. <laughs> and a shout out to Coach Paul. I think you're a coach at somewhere in Florida, so go Gators. <laughs> Thank you, Paul Chandler. 
And our final shout outs are to Frank, the Camp Father Daily, and his dog, the truck dog, the truck, Harley, man. truck dog Harley, <laughs> truck, truck. and his dog. <laughs> He's got an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> He's the camp father. Shout out to Hong Long, one of our longtime supporters. Uh, he had no specific shout outs, but thank you very much. Speaking of which, this ramen again is provided by Meredith. It's kimchi flavored. <laughs> oh yeah, Meredith like supplied the culinary for this yeah. episode. <laughs> and we've got some wood ear in there, which there's actually a twig up there that has wood ear growing on it, but this is actually from a store, so. Mm. Let's, uh, it smells good. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's nice and spicy. I love the, I love the texture of the wood ear. Andrew's eating it Asian style with his mouth completely <laughs> open. <laughs> my Asian parents told me not to do that. <laughs> Mm. There's actually a lot of flavor in that. I was surprised. Yeah. I love Whittier. Like, Whittier's really good. Mm -hmm. but it, mm -hmm. You see it a lot in the wild. Oh my god, that was so good. After that delicious meal, it was time to hang our food and other scented items. Andrew had spotted a pine tree that seemed like it would work well enough. The tree I found had a pretty long branch sticking out horizontally, so we opted for a simpler method of hanging the bag. Whippoorwills began singing their familiar song as we secured the bags to a nearby tree. What is that? <laughs> what? Is that a knot? This is, I think. <laughs> it's supposed to be. <laughs> good. Well, there's our bearing. <laughs> Pretty good tree. From underneath the tarp, it seemed like the sun was finally breaking through the clouds. It was time to get packed. Just as we finished packing, more clouds seemed to roll in above, and a light drizzle began to fall. But even with the clouds and the rain, everything seemed beautiful. All the leaves had a beautiful glow, and the damp weather made all the colors seem more striking. What do you guys think of this weather? You know, uh, I woke up this morning and it almost looked like it was gonna be sunny. It was trying really hard to be sunny. It looked like it. It definitely looked like it. Yeah. We're definitely lucky enough to be able to pack up our gear when it was dry. That's true. That's true. Maybe if we had gotten up a little bit earlier too. <laughs> Nine years. Nine years since our first backpacking trip through Shenandoah National Park. It's the place that first made us truly appreciate the woods. The place where we discovered what it really meant to be free. Who knows if we'd be out here now, doing this, if it weren't for that first trip. The truth is, Shenandoah seemed a bit underwhelming our first time there. There were lots of trees and some streams, but no wide open spaces or mountain vistas. And yet, that trip left an impression on all of us. For us, it's not just about seeing all of the sights, climbing the highest peak, or hiking the longest distance. Those are worthy pursuits, no doubt. But out here, you learn that there's more to it than that. This is 
close. I think we're right here. Oh yeah. We can see the trail we're supposed to go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the trail we were supposed to go on, right? Was it? Oh, Hazel Mountain. Yeah, Hazel yeah. Mountain. No, no. Oh, oh, no, no, no. no. Huh? This, is <laughs> this is both Hazel Mountain. Well, no, this isn't the junction because we would have never gotten All of this was the trail we were yeah, supposed we to go on. This is where oh, we Oh, well, yeah, going. if we had gotten to this junction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were supposed to take this path to here and, and keep go going that way. way. Instead, we went somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, it's right, it's like literally right at the beginning. All right, okay. this is the final stretch, so. There are no borders or boundaries out here. No authority figures telling you how to live your life or what you can and can't do. Out here, it's just you and trees as far as the eye can see. And it's here, among the soil, the twigs, the streams, and the trees, where freedom still truly reigns supreme. We've seen a lot of impressive sights in our life. We've seen incredible castles in Europe, grand palaces in Asia, and towering skyscrapers across the world. Monuments built to boast our might, and our conquests, and our endeavors. But nothing mankind builds will ever surpass the natural world in beauty. To us, even a trickling stream, a delicate wildflower, or a leafy canopy have an immeasurable quality that no palace or castle can replicate. And the boundless freedom that they represent is far more important. This is Griffin Bar Tavern thing. Whoa, that guy scared me. <laughs> this is 100% where we're eating. You can look at the menu. I'm going in. <laughs> Watch your step right here, guys. Words can't express how happy I am. Thank you. Thanks so much. Very good. <laughs> I was thinking about what I was gonna say, and it started making me laugh. Coffee is my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've chased everybody out of the restaurant. I mean, we were just minding our own business, but something happened, and everybody's gone. <laughs> Must be three dudes who what have been camping. What did you camping. say? Oh, you were saying, I have nothing. What you <laughs> still <laughs> Griffin's Tavern, thumbs up. Come to this tavern. Good stuff. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh god, it's so cool. <laughs> Dion has a flashlight on her belt. Colonel, I found this thing. It's called calorie meat. I'm gonna try it out. Almost dropped it. <laughs> that would be bad in this jungle environment. Oh! You did drop it! Some pieces fell out. <laughs> like in so Kikajiro. Good. <laughs> it's good. Mmm! I want some more! <laughs> Ryan? Andrew? Robbie? Where are those guys? <laughs>